Ah, so what am I doing, you ask? A bread pan, some orange duct tape, and a camera. Hey, welcome to Real Aid's Bench. This is Roland, and today we're testing, this is what I'm doing, testing the three cameras that I've got down to the tops uh, choices in the mini bullet design with the different uh, versions. We've got a an earlier X-View chip, we've got a Sony Super Hat here, and then a, a really new Sony um, X-View chip in this one also. The main differences we see here in the size is just because these two have an OSD built in. So on screen display, we're going to be able to do, make some adjustments. So in this video, we're going to get very specific about a couple of different cameras that you might find out there, what I found in the research um, that I've did, hopefully help you guys make a little more choices as you dial in on customizing your own setup. So for starters, we're going to dissect the camera. This is the stock lens that we're taking off. And inside, most of the time, these cameras are going to have a little IRD filter on here to actually cut. Get this light shut get this light in here at the right angle. You can see that little glass filter in here and we're just going to take um, a little screwdriver and kind of push it and pry it and it lifts right up. Right up and out like that. So we're going to remove that so these cameras can actually see IR. So we're out here at the range and we are going to do a test with all three cameras. We're starting with the um, E190. It's the smaller version with the X-View, the uh, Super Had X-View. So very high resolution. You can make no adjustments though. It automatically switches between black and white. There's no adjustments. We're at the range, and we're going to start off with just a standard uh, 190 looms LED, white LED, and we're just going to see what we can see. So here we are, there's our 15 yard, and it blows it out if I'm centered right on it. There's our 25, and you can see out there 50, 75, 100, 125, and the very last one, 150. So there's your LED. Here is the 850 IR. We're at 25, and some adjustments can be made. This is an extra bright light here. Um, a little less IR would be nice, but here is, I'm sorry, 15, 25, 50, 75, 100. And now when we get out there to that 100, 125, 150, my beam is more reasonable for brightness so just wished I had it adjustable right now and I don't so this one here again was the E190 here's the 940 illumination now 940 spot and as bright as we can there's 15 25 we can see 50, 75, 100, barely make out the 125, uh, might be the 150 I can see out there, but that's about it. Okay, now we have got uh, the larger cameras, the cameras, the 230 series, which is the larger bullets with the OSDs, so I can actually um, tweak them. Now I've been out here tweaking the settings, getting them as close that I think is possible with um, no other adjustments. This is what I can see with the e, with the um, DNR 230. It's the Super Had Sony Super Had uh, resolution, a little bit less than the other ones, but this is no light at all. You can see the reflection of the neighbors. See there are a couple of lights that's way down there, about 300 and some yards away. Um, so definitely we've got a little better 
settings better view with no lights at all. On that, here is again a standard LED, white LED, all the way out. Here is the 8. Um, 850 IR lamp give some ideas of what this looks like all the way out to 50 75 100 125 150 pretty decent now what's nice about this because it has an OSD I could sit here and tweak them settings for any closer range shooting now this light I know that we've got more lights to test um, this isn't the, quite the best choice but I could tweak them settings so that doesn't blow that out anymore and I could actually see that. That's what's nice about that OSD. There's um, a lot of adjustments that I, we can make. And here is that DNR230 camera with the 940 IR. Garden cart out there. Um, it's not as bright. There's 25, 50, and yeah, 75, 100, and 125 is barely, but I, I can't recognize the 150 from here. Um, closer range, pretty, really good settings actually on this right. Now this last camera is the EJ230. It is the X-View chip, the highest resolution that you can get in this mini bullet camera. It also has the OSD. This is its settings. The best that I could seem to come up with for general overall. Um, again, there's the neighbors and their lights. Uh, it adjusts fairly well for the blowout, the changes. You can see the best with this camera. There's no doubt that XU chip is picking up nice. This is no extra illumination. To the eye, I can see the glint off of there, but um, this camera is seeing really decent. I can't make out that cart with my eye at all and I can see the cart against the building. So here is standard LED illumination here. 190 white flashlight so this is normal white. Once again we're going to go to the 850. Again it's blowing it out but pull it to the side and look at the detail that it's picking up from just the uh, little bit of overview very good resolution 25 50 75 125 and 150 wow that is awesome check out the trees way I mean that's four or five hundred yards right there them, them very last trees in my beam probably that's a uh, that's yeah that's gonna be the 400 ish in very last bit probably almost 500 yards and then we've got the 940. Um, where are we at here? 940. And it's sensitive enough. Again, the OSD, I could adjust that down. It's sensitive enough. This is blowing out the 940. Now, the 940 is um, a bit, it's got a dial on it, so I can adjust it. This is the Pulsar 940 IR illuminator. I'm going to crank it back up. We're going to go out to. Here's my garden cart. There's 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. Definitely can see these a little better than we could with any of the other cameras. Again, these settings a little bit tweakable with the OSD. Here's a shot of the OSD. And I won't go through all the different settings, but it gives you an idea that um, a lot of these you can go on into and I've got been out here and I'm freezing cold my fingers about ready to fall off I'm going to exit along with this little section Burr, I am cold it's like 30 degrees out there frost is falling dark and my fingers are freezing off I think so hey, join me with my warm fire and let me finish up what I just found out. Now I've tested a few other cameras that I'm not even going to include in here. I, um, some of them just didn't work very well. Regardless, the long and short, 
narrowing it down to three that I think are all do usable and reasonably decent. We've got, again, we've got the, um, the smaller version, the smallest bullet version possible, but there's no OSD. So there's a little joystick on the back of these guys right here, just a tiny little joystick to get in and out of the on-screen display where you can adjust all the different settings. So this little E190, it's a, K, it's a KTNC camera. It's using a Sony X-View chip. It's using the 960 um, Sony X-View. And if I get the paper, I can tell you which one it is. Right here. It's using the uh, Sony X-View HAD CCD2. So the 960. You, got, you get up to a 1,020 horizontal, 508 vertical resolution. Good resolution. Both this camera and the EJ230 have the same chip in it. Now the EJ230, from what we just seen, has the very best. It's got good. It's got pretty good light and pretty decent resolution for a one-third chip and a small little compact camera that's waterproof and very easy to mount in, as you've seen earlier. Um, same chip. The problem is, is this is all factory setup. You can't tw change any of the settings. Um, it's not bad, but if you want very small and you want to let it go auto from color to black and white and all of that, my preference is on these, unless you know you're shooting daytime and you want to use these, um, you want to just keep them on the black and white setting. I froze my fingers for you guys. They're not falling off. In order to find out, play with all the different settings, some one way, some another, adding both settings in and tweaking them together. Um, I'm going to detail in another video what I think is the total best settings for the EJ230, my top choice. This is the DNR230. It's using the Super Had chip and uh, just not quite as sensitive to light. It's still I think all the, these are in the top running of this class of camera. Um, but there's no doubt that this 960X view and the EJ230, we're going to dig into that just a little bit deeper, just a separate video to show you the different adjustments and what I found best. So if you buy one of these. Hey, welcome to the table. Pull up a chair and enjoy some Thanksgiving turkey. That was yesterday. Hey, kind of cleaned up the room for family coming over and um, all of my night vision stuff is gone. Now it's about a week or two after uh, you've seen all them other videos that I shot and just watching through them a little bit, wanted to share a few more things. It is the day after Thanksgiving. I'm full. Good smoked turkey. And um, hope you guys had a wonderful holiday too if you celebrated Thanksgiving. If not, just be thankful. It's a whole lot better than complaining. Anyhow, a few things to wrap up what you just saw. Um, for starters, I'm not an expert, so don't take me as an expert. I'm sharing what I've learned so far. Um, correct me where I'm wrong. I, I did this study specifically though for lower cost cameras and in the bullet version because of how simple it is to mount. Um, the few of the other cameras I didn't mention here, I had tried a few other small bullet Sony X-View, just the specific X-View CCD, not the newer uh, 960 X-View had that uh, comes on the EJ230. Definitely some huge differences. Um, the earlier X-View is not near as sensitive to IR. That is the latest chip that I know of that you can get the Sony XView 960 that's available in this mini bullet camera that has that good of quality of uh, low light detection in the IR realm. I will say that there's other cameras out there. Um, again, the guys over the pond, England, Europe, have been messing with the Watek uh, brand. I am intending, if possible, to get into some more of that. Without saying a lot more, um, I'll wait till my details are together because sometimes how long it takes me to get there. But that's kind of in the background working too. Um,
what was I going to say? <sighs> I think my brain train just derailed. Um. Ah, now I remember. I wanted to show you a little bit of camera settings. A lot of manufacturers show some really low lux settings saying, hey, you know, we can see at point zero 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 three something else. Well, that's usually done by the shutter or sense up. You can see what I'm doing here now, flipping through the shutter a little bit. Um, what happens is the shutter speed slows down so you get better exposure. It's like taking a picture of stars, but look how jerky it becomes. Um, I could adjust sense up and I would get something similar. Um, both are kind of related to each other. Um, without going into a lot more detail, just know that if you have a camera and or you're looking for some and they're sh selling you on a very high um, lux setting, it's pretty, de and especially if they're using sense up or an exposure setting like you just seen there, it's probably going to be jerky and not all that great. Naturally, you've seen my choice, the EJ230, hands down, um, best detection, and with the OSD, you can customize it. For some of you, that is too much messing around. Um, and I realize that within certain si hunting situations, a little bit of tweaking to that OSD will, m will get you the best. In general, though, in the next video, I'll just go through what I found was the best um, settings for the OSD on the EJ230. Very simple. Um, I think you can probably stick them there and leave it, but it kind of depends on your IR light and if that is a dimmable light, how close are you shooting, how far away are you trying to get, what other light sources around are affecting the overall. Um, this isn't a simple thing as much as I'm trying to simplify it. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next couple videos. Oh yeah, and another thing I enjoy, smoked turkey. If you ever get a chance to try it, I got into smoking a few years ago with the pellet grills. I slow smoked at 180 degrees for about 24 hours. Awesome turkey. Used a wood pellet that was made out of old wine barrels, so it's a wine-soaked oak wood pellet. It was a sweet and smooth smoked finish. Hey, I'm getting hungry just talking about it. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving and a good Christmas to you guys. Again, thanks for watching the detailed version of the cameras that I found for the Rolaids night vision setups that I'm trying to rig. Backwood Engineering. Again, thanks a lot for watching. Um, stop. Stop this whole thing. Start again. I, I can't seem to get my words out. Stop. Again, thanks for watching. And we will dig deeper into the 230. And we'll dig a little deeper into the EJ230 and all of its settings in a whole different video. Take care. I'm going to warm up. It's freezing cold. <laughs>